Amazing. Welcome, everyone. This is week 13 of Open Life Science. We are uh, really, really close to the end of our program. And today we have allocated this time for personal ecology and some social time with everybody. Um, so to iterate again, uh, this call is being recorded. It will be available on YouTube. We have a code, code of conduct that applies to this call. So if there is anything, uh, any concern, any report you would like to make, please email to the team at openlifesci.org or you can also contact you, Bernice, me or Emmy uh, individually if uh, there's something you would rather not share with the full team. Uh, we will have breakout sessions during the social call. So it would be really helpful if you can edit your name by adding S in front of your name for spoken or W in front of your name for written reflection. Um, so Elisa is going to lead our social session where she would be trying the written aspect for the first time. So please also give us some feedback on how did it go, where we can improve and so on. We have an icebreaker. Today we are actually gonna spend a lot of time talking about taking a break, taking care of yourself and sustaining your energy as open science leaders. And the icebreaker question is, what is one thing you do to take care of yourself from busy week or study days? And we're documenting it mostly because we can probably draw from each other's idea. And if we are out of ideas in, in a break time, we can come back to this notes and see what others are doing. Okay, so with that, uh, the reminder around uh, transcription, we have live transcription on Otter AI. You can uh, click on the link on the top left to look at the screen, or you could also open that in different screen. So my role today is uh, to actually talk about personal ecology. Uh, this is a topic I learned about when I was a part of Mozilla Open Leaders, and I was really inspired by the fact that everybody was talking about working hard, but nobody was talking about how sometimes working hard can be difficult, that you can put too much burden on yourself and forget that there is something called self-care. So I'm going to share my screen and show you some slides that we have prepared. All right, so self-care is what we do to take care of ourselves so we can contribute to the work that inspires and fulfills us. So self-care is not a selfish act. Self-care is actually an important act as a part of making sure that you stay inspired and motivated in the work that you do. There's another term called personal ecology, which is a little bit more than self-care. It is what we do to maintain balance, pacing, and efficiency to sustain our energy over a prolonged time. So self-care could be something that you do in a short amount of time that you have now, but personal ecology is something that you continue to do to make sure that your energy is sustained for a longer period of time. And when I'm saying longer, it's not about one month or a year, but hopefully in the coming years. So we can't have a healthy community if we are individually burned out. If we want to become leader, we need to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves in the best way possible. Um, so we inspire other people to follow and not get burned out while they contribute to our work. So burnout is characterized in the occupational context, uh, which, which could look like as feeling of energy depletion or exhaustion, increased mental distance or feeling of negativism related to job, reduced professional efficacy, and that can lead to stress. And it can have a lot more broader consequences if we don't address them. So you can ignore burnout if you're feeling it or you do not sometimes recognize that it's happening to you, but it can start reflecting on your personal well-being or personal life. So this is where we would really like you to uh, be very responsive to how you're feeling in the work context. And in this case, work could be the project that you're building currently and the community that you're trying to lead. Uh, we want to take some time today to show you some of the toolkits that can help you think about your personal ecology in a proactive, strategic, and systemic way. So for example, we will take five minutes to actually reflect on two topics. One is to identifying the most fulfilling condition under which you thrive and how you can sustain them and identify least fulfilling condition that frustrate you and how we can avoid them. So for example, uh, here is a three word pair that I selected for myself for the most fulfilling day. 
So I love when I have empowering exchanges with people, when I have productive collaboration, like with the OLS team and mission alignment. Whenever I work on anything that is about, you know, working with people, empowering the community or the accessibility, I really feel inspired. But, the, but there are also things that, that, I, that makes me frustrated or makes me feel annoyed, uh, which are, for example, unclear expectation. If I'm brought into a project and nobody told me what the expectations are around, I would be very annoyed or really not productive. Pointless meetings. Sometimes people just set up meeting and ask you to be there, but it isn't really contributing to the work that you're doing or the collaboration that you're trying to build with them. And destructive comments, for example, um, rude emails that can be really annoying or a, a Twitter uh, rant that I don't want to be part of. So I would really ask you to, you know, take some time now, two minutes uh, probably, and write down in the etherpad your three pairs that makes your day fulfilling and your three pairs, word pairs, that makes your day unfulfilling. So I'll leave this sentence on the screen for you to feel inspired. You can't sustain a movement if you don't sustain yourself by a guy of input. So I'm gonna let the recording roll, but stay quiet for two minutes. So some of the things that uh, Yo has written, uh, positive feedback, growing newbies and empowering collaboration uh, that makes her day fulfilling. Lizana is writing that feeling of learning and seeing people learning. I think that's really, that's really, really empowering yourself. I love it. New strategies to try challenges, uh, new people joining the project. Uh, Bernice has written constructive meeting, learning new and exciting things and seeing people learning. So I think here people really like to see other people grow. Um, Manu has written clear task, uninterrupted time to work and learning new things. Um, Sebastian wrote sense of accomplishment of daily aims, good collaboration with colleagues. I really love when you have to do list and you can check it off. It just makes you feel like you're doing so much. I'm gonna move on to the rest of the folks reading the next part, what makes your day unfulfilling. So for example, Nadine has written, ignoring fundamental problem, others transferring the stress onto me and no time for clear thinking. I also love the deep thinking aspect of our work. So sometimes I've been asked to like block my calendar and write deep thinking work or something so people can't block it. Uh, Sarah has written, unfocused mind, not reaching agreement or unhelpful meeting. I think these are all, uh, they all take so much time to actually address them, right? Like they, they are not easy thing. So you don't really know when they will be addressed. Elisa writes back-to-back -back meetings being approached in condescending way and tedious task. Yeah, I, don't I do not like when people assume um, what you know, what you don't know and don't do really not make you feel great about working with them. Then Michael is writing unclear tasks, interrupting distractions. Jessica has written inefficient, ignored communication. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I feel like I'm being call, called out here because of emails that we don't respond sometimes, or some emails that takes you so long to respond that you kind of don't know where to start. <laughs> oh, Jessica, not you. <laughs> I love it. Um, so I'm going to actually take a few more minutes to show you that there is a lot more than just the word pair, right? Like we can do more than word pairs. And, and the reason is not to just identify what these problems are, but to actually address them and make sure that we are thinking about them in a more constructive way. So second part is that it's, it starts with ensuring your own well-being and availability for yourself, those you care for and work. So Everything that we are teaching in open, science, open life science, we want you to take those and build it into your leadership. 
you can't lead a team when you're not taking care of yourself and you can't inspire a healthy team if you're not taking care of yourself. So it's really a lot around about how you can take care of your well-being and make sure that you're doing it for others. And only then you can make space for others. Once you've gone through how you actually organize your life, you can help others to inspire a life that is fulfilling for them too. So we've prepared handout with prompts and questions that we don't expect you to do right now, but I want to just go through it so you know uh, when you can go back to it and when you can start building a plan for yourself that actually builds into your habit and allows you to inspire and create your personal plan. So first part you would see is called work-life quadrant sna snapshot. So discover how to bring your whole self to work in ways that empower you while maintaining boundaries between your work and home to avoid burnout. And this is a really, really important issue to talk about when we are working from home, when, when there is no real boundary of where the work starts and where the home starts. And this is something that you could try to build for yourself. I'm not the best person to advise you on this, but I also want to remind myself that I should be doing it. So think about things at work I want to keep at work, things at work I want to bring into my life. Things in my life I want to keep outside work and things in my life I want to bring into my work. So this is a quadrant where you can actually allow things to move as they, um, as they are inspiring. And snapshot, you want to think about your responses that show you about your work-life balance. Uh, where do you see opportunities to bring things into your life from work and vice versa? And how might you set boundaries around things you don't want to bring back and forth? So for example, one thing that I really want to do is not to bring my work laptop into my bedroom because if that happens, then I'm working until really late. Um, but then I really want to make sure that some of the organization and communication that I have at work the kindness that I show for my colleagues, I also show at home. So there are things that you can really decide very consciously what you're trying to exchange between these and where you set the boundary for yourself. There is other part, which is about delights and distraction snapshot. Find ways to create a delightful, engaging, remote or distributed workplace that doesn't unduly distract you from your work or engagement with colleagues. So for example, I, I really love to start my day with some really peppy music. Um, I do not read books in the morning, but I love to book, read book at the end of my day. Sometimes if I'm taking a break or having a lunch alone, I would put on a TED talk, for example, which, which is a delight for me. Always cool, so I always want to comfy blanket around me. So there are some things that I know that brings me joy, but there are also distraction. If I have, if I'm working on documents that doesn't have consistent, consistent formatting, I would spend a lot of time actually building the format then working on the document, which is actually distracting. If I'm working in a cluttered space, I'll get very distracted and I wouldn't work. I would actually clean up. So I also don't like to feel out of place or isolated. So I also keep some coffee calls with my friends or colleagues if I'm um, feeling quite alone or isolated. The last part is compare and contrast exercise, which you would do on your own time. So the question around what your status looks right now, you can think about what makes you think about it and how would you like to apply changes uh, to, to find the balance. So I want to actually now reflect on some of the thoughts and ideas that you have and leave comments for each other. So let me stop the screen. And I want to show you quickly how this uh, exercise looks like. So this is a sheet. Of course, you can go back and uh, fill back your most fulfilling and least fulfilling information. Things at work, I want to keep at work quadrant that we just discussed and delight and distraction part. And all of these three exercises will help you decide how your current status looks like and how you would like to change that. Um, so what I have written in the document below, that we're taking break from 16 December to 6 January. And uh, we hope that you are also taking some break around that time. And if the time allows you, please take some time to reflect, come back to it and create a plan for yourself. So before we finish the session, I want to just take five minutes to think about any reflection, thoughts or ideas you want to share with others around self-care, personal ecology, your own example, um, both positive or negative, uh, anything that you would like. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen.